Hey y'all, Coach in a Fight here, talking about the sacred calendar. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how 360 days plus four days equals 365 days. No, you don't need to call Auburn University, where I got my engineering degree from, and check their mathematics program just yet. At least wait to the end of the video. Let's stop by the scripture where I got this information first. Like, for instance, over here in Second Enoch, where Enoch told us that the solar year has 365 days in it, 365 and a quarter days in it, to be exact. That was Second Enoch. But in First Enoch, he told us that the year has 364 days in it. And he tells us we end up at 364 days by adding four seasonal days each year. Let me show you what I mean. Now, we're looking here at Rev 5, or the generic version of the celestial clock calendar that we've been putting together and selling since February. This is just an image of the faceplate. Normally, it has three hands on it like a clock, and it works similar to a clock, except for it moves a lot slower. This was actually the second revision, the one we've been selling up until this latest revision. So you see it has hands that appear like a normal clock, except on this one, what used to be the hour hand now tracks the sun's position relative to the stars, and it takes it an entire year to go all the way around. That's actually how it is a calendar. And then you have the minute hand, which tracks the moon, and it takes it 30 days to go around. And you have what used to be the second hand now tracking the sun. And it takes it 12 hours to make one revolution. But we give our father praise and honor for the understanding that 60 revolutions of the hour hand is equal to 30 days. So our clocks was actually made to function as calendars all the time. What was missing was the understanding from Enoch and how we have to calibrate them every four months. I believe that's the reason why nobody has come up with this idea so far or been able to figure this out is because they're either not aware of the book of Enoch, don't understand how it works, or is in rejection of that particular scripture. But anyway, while the sun hand is tracking the hours as it does normally, 60 revolutions of that sun hand is equal to 30 days on the moon hand. And then 12 revolutions of the moon hand, of course, gives us 360 days. But therein comes why we have to add the four additional days, else our clock calendars would only show 360 days in a year. And again, this is why I believe nobody has figured this out is actually been hidden in the scripture this whole time that to make our clocks act like calendars, all we have to do is put two clock movements together and then add these four additional days. So when I say that the clock is keeping time as normal, it's actually keeping 30 day months. So that would be considered a month according to the sun. But the moon is the regulator of time and its lunation is only 29.5 days, which is why we have to add four additional days in order to keep everything calibrated and working together. Else, our clocks will fall behind by a day and a half every four months. So how does four seasonal days make our calendar have 365 days? Well, that's what I'm going to show you in this video. So let's go over to the U.S. Naval Observatory and let's get some information about the new moons. We'll put them in this table so that we can look at the dates and compare them to the actual date that we saw the new moon in the year 2022. Like, for instance, how there was a 0% moon that fell on April the 1st at 0600 hours or 6 a.m. for you civilians. But if you remember the month of April, we actually saw the sliver of the new moon on April the 2nd, 
We see over in the book of Jubilees in chapter six that that new moon falling in the first month makes it a day of remembrance. That's actually one of those seasonal days that Enoch was talking about. When we have to add a day to the calendar. In other words, that's the day that we calibrate the calendar. We have to do so every four months or at the beginning of every season. That's what's known as the day of remembrance, the seasonal day, the four extra days that are added to the celestial calendar that keeps the alignment between the sun, the moon and the stars. If you have one of our celestial clock calendars and you forget to update it every four months, you'll notice that it'll lose track of the days, the weeks and then the months. That's what Enoch was talking about when he says we greatly err when we forget about these four days. But anyway, let's look at this really closely. We had the day of remembrance to fall on April the 2nd. And then the next new moon was sighted on May the 2nd. That was 30 days away. So on April the 2nd is when we calibrated our celestial clock calendars, aligning the new moon up with the new moon position. And then 30 days later, we had another new moon. So that one would have been aligned perfectly in the new moon position, just like the first month. But then we had a new moon on May the 30th, which was only 29 days away. So whereas normally the hand would have reached the new moon position on the 30th day, since the moon is traveling at a faster rate, the new moon is seen at the end of the Sabbath day. That's at the beginning of the third month. And then we see at the beginning of the fourth month, there was a new moon sighted on June the 30th, 30 days away. So that new moon will also fall in this cell here. But being in the fourth month, we know that that is also a day of remembrance and the time when we are to recalibrate our calendar. And to do so, what we do, even though the new moon is falling in this cell, we actually add a day to the calendar by manually pushing the moon hand back to the new moon position. So that's actually one day that was added to the calendar. But let's keep going. Maybe I can add a shape so we can keep up a little bit better. So being the first day of the fourth month, we have recalibrated our clock calendar, setting the moon hand to the new moon position right at sunset. We've already added one day in the first season. Now we're entering summertime there on June the 30th. And we see we had 29 days until we got to the new moon that fell on July the 29th. So since it was only 29 days, that means that the new moon is falling in this cell here. And then there was 30 days until the new moon on August the 28th which means that it came all the way back around and stayed in this cell here for the new moon. And then another 30 days passed until September the 27th, which was the new moon of the seventh month and another day of remembrance. So once again, our clocks will be recalibrated, putting the new moon in the new moon position on the 27th. And to do so, once again, we manually move the moon hand, adding one day to the celestial clock calendar and putting it back in the new moon position. So there's two days that we've added to the calendar. But let's keep going. We see that there's 29 days until October the 26th when there was a new moon. So that was put the new moon in this cell. And then there was 30 days until November the 20. Fifth, when we'll see a new moon. So that will keep the new moon in this cell here. But then the next new moon will fall on December the 24th. That's only 29 days away, which would mean that the new moon would actually fall in this cell. But December the 24th is actually the new moon in the 10th month. So it is yet another day of remembrance and another day to be added to the calendar in order to calibrate it. But notice that this time it actually moves two days. One, two. 
So now we've added four days. One day in the spring season, one day in the summer season, and now two days have we added in the fall season. Now, let me be real clear here. The new moon is always falling in this position here. It's just that our clocks are a little bit slower than the moon actually is. So we have to move the hand forward in order to catch up. So we're never going to see a new moon in the actual 28th cell. The new moon always occurs about 29.5 days each month. For one new moon to another is always about 29.5 days. But our clock is just keeping time as normal. 30 days instead of 29.5. So our clock is falling behind by a day and a half every quarter of the year. And that day and a half is actually adding up. And so in that particular month, when we go out to see the new moon, the clock will be just that far behind. And we're adding the one day for the seasonal day in reality, we're actually pushing the needle of the hand, not one day, but actually two days ahead. I hope that makes sense because this is how it works. So let's keep going. We see from the 24th of December to the 23rd of January is 30 days. But there's 29 days until the next new moon in February the 21st. So the new moon will be seen in this cell. And then there are 30 days until the new moon on March the 23rd. So the moon hand again will be in this cell when the new moon appears. And since that's the new moon of the first month, we have to add another day in order to calibrate the calendar, which is the fourth seasonal day, making it the 364 day year. And that's the celestial year or the sacred year. But in actuality, we've added five days to the solar year, making 365 days in a year. All because of the difference between the hours in a day and the days in a month or a month. So that's how four days added to a 360 day year equals 365 solar days. If you got any questions, and I'm sure you do, please put them down in the comment section. And if you think you understand, maybe you can help me field some of those questions down there. It's important that everybody gets this understanding. And the more we try to help others understand, the more we'll understand ourselves. So let's do ourselves a favor and try to help our brother.